Hi guys, Whiteside here uh, with another World of Tanks gameplay commentary video. In this video I'm using the SU-85B. Uh, it's SU-85B because it was a prototype SU-85. Uh, this design was rejected in favor of the actual SU-85 just because this uh, couldn't mount as powerful a gun because of its weaker suspension. Uh, this suspension was based on the T-28 chassis, whereas the actual SU-85 or the normal SU-85 was based on the T-34 suspension, so it could carry a much more powerful 107mm gun, whereas this guy could only carry an 85mm gun. So this was rejected in favor of the more powerful uh, SU-85. In game, this is a very fast, it can, I think it can do about 50, 55 kilometers an hour tank destroyer, which is, I think, one of the faster tier tank destroyers in the game. And certainly it's the fastest for its tier. It also mounts the pretty powerful 85mm gun. Uh, it's nothing to write home about, but for most tanks that's level and below, it will destroy them in two to three hits, which is pretty good. Uh, it's also fairly accurate and has a pretty good rate of fire, but nothing spectacular. Uh, this tank's biggest asset is its speed and maneuverability. Uh, and its biggest liability is its armor and lack of health. So don't, even though you're fast, I wouldn't rush with this. I just move up to good positions quickly and support your team like that instead of you know wildly rushing forward. <laughs> right here, I was just taking pot shots at this guy, but I think he goes behind the building, and I don't think I get him. But uh, that's the thing you should do with the tank destroyer is just support your team. Even if you don't get a bunch of kills, you're helping your team out just by hitting the enemy tanks. Uh, and even if you don't kill them, damaging them is important. So that's what I that's what you should do. And I actually got a fair number of kills in this game, but you shouldn't expect to get a bunch of kills every game in a tank destroyer. It's better just to support your team and damage enemy tanks. Uh, I actually kind of like this map. It, it's cool because you don't spawn on your flag like on most maps. You spawn about half a kilometer away from your flag, and you have to either drive up to your flag or drive up to the enemy's flag and try and capture it. So unlike most maps where you spawn right on your flag or like right next to it, you spawn a fair distance away, so it's kind of a choice, like whether you want to go offense or defense. In this map, I'm, or this time, I'm going uh, defense and going towards my flag, but I've gone, I normally when I'm in a medium tank or a light tank like to go on offense, but in a tank destroyer or defense, you're better suited for defense anyway, so that's what I did here. And right here, I was uh, trying to advance with my team and uh, take some pot shots at the enemy where I saw them. Um, I think most of my teammates got killed in this map, so, or game, so, whatever. But I managed to get a fair number of kills, like I said, so, must have been doing something right. Uh, and one thing I would advise with this tank destroyer is either get the camo netting attachment, which allows you to get better cover in uh, bushes and that, or get the spall liner, which uh, reduces your damage, damage to you. And reducing your damage, that would be really great. But, or you can get the rammer, which actually uh, increases the, uh, I feel, rate of fire. So you can mount up to three. Uh, <coughs> that was a nice shot right there. You can mount up to three, uh, like uh, I don't know what they're called. I think they're called attachments uh, that can uh, boost various features. And definitely camo net, maybe spall liner, maybe uh, binoculars or rammer. One of those. They're pretty expensive. They're I think like range from about fifty thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, silver currency, which is the what you get for playing battles and winning, uh, but they're definitely worth it. It improves your tank a lot. I mean, even 10% might not seem like much on rate of fire, but when you're only firing 10 rounds a minute, that extra one round really, really helps. So it, it makes a difference a lot if you can afford it. I mean, if you're just trying to get up to the high level tanks as quickly as possible, then I'd wait till you got like a tier five or six tank to start buying those things. But uh, I invested in a camo net for this guy, and it really makes a difference. You just stop in a in like a bush, and it increases your uh, the ch your chance of being detected. It makes it go down by like 10, 15 percent. So definitely worth it. And uh, this guy right here, I don't know what he was doing. He gets like stuck on a tree, or maybe I track him. I don't remember. Yeah, I think I hit him in the tracks. Uh, but the if you can catch people at unawares with this tank, you'll you do massive damage to them and just kill them very quickly. Problem is, if you get caught at unawares, you normally get destroyed pretty quickly too. So uh, rush with caution. That's why, that's my motto. Um, so move from cover to cover, like I'm doing. Take time your shots carefully. Don't rush anything, and use your accuracy in your large damage 
to your advantage. So like shoot and then oh, shoot and scoot is another good moniker to remember, not moniker, whatever that's called. Uh, shoot and scoot. So you shoot, uh, move from one cover to the next, wait for your gun to reload, shoot again, move to cover. And you can either shoot and scoot in advance where you, after each shot you're advancing forward like I'm doing here, or you can shoot and scoot defensively where you shoot and either move like to the side or move backwards to another cover. And on lots of maps, especially like this one, there's enough bushes, rocks, trees, that you always have cover to advance to. And that's the big advantage of, this of the SU-85, is uh, it has the fast, it pretty fast, so uh, you can normally get from cover to the next quickly. And uh, I don't know what I was thinking, I kept missing these shots. I think there was like a low earthen wall that that guy was hiding behind, so I wasn't hitting him, but... Whatever, uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, so it's better to shoot and miss than not shoot and miss, obviously. <laughs> Sounds stupid, I guess, but uh, you should just try for shots when you have it, so. Uh, and I think we, I, I, we were down to about like four or five guys on a team right here, and I saw on the little mini-map that one of their guys was coming towards their base, so I was just started getting really aggressive trying to rush their base and get on it and capture it before the match ended. So, uh, yeah. I was missing that guy. I don't know how I missed that guy. It just seemed like it should be a perfect one-hit kill. Right there, I finished him off, though, so. Uh, I finished this guy off. I probably should have actually just rushed forward, ignored him, let my teammates take him out, uh, and tried to get on their flag sooner, but whatever. We still won, and I was kind of greedy for the kills, so whatever. Uh, that is actually one thing. You shouldn't be greedy for the kills. If you know your teammates can take out an enemy, just let them do it. Don't try and get greedy. Try and hit another enemy that's stronger. Or just get on their base and finish them off. Unfortunately, actually, I think they were capturing and were ahead of us, but one of my teammates went back, shot one of their guys, and knocked their capturing down. Uh, and so we won. I sped up this last part because it was just me sitting on their base capturing. So, uh, as always guys, uh, if you liked it, give it a like. If you really liked it, favorite it. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, subscribe to my channel. So, thanks for watching guys.